Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're going to take a look at yet another plugin from the good folks over uh, at Plugin Alliance. We're going to take a look at the Purple Audio MC77, which you see on the screen um, in front of you here. We're going to listen to it on some drums and some bass and some acoustic guitars and maybe some keyboards. I'm going to walk you through the plugin and kind of tell you a little bit about it, show you some unique features that's in the plugin, um, software that wasn't part of the hardware from Purple Audio when this hardware unit was made. Um, and then you can uh, go out and demo it for yourself at the Plugin Alliance website. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give me the old thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously. Tremendously. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your five free mixing training courses worth about 110 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com, five free mixing training courses. And speaking of mixing, if you want to learn mixing in a very non-technical way, great for beginners and intermediates, head on over to mixingmadeeasy.net and check out what I have going on over there. So now let's head on into Studio One. And here is the Purple Audio MC77. Looks very familiar in its layout. It's kind of a take of the uh, um, 1176 compressor. Purple Audio made this hardware unit, I believe sometime in the early to mid 90s, kind of their take on the um, 1176 and Plugin Alliance went ahead. Um, and I believe this is part, part of Brainworks as well. I'm not sure if Brainworks is actually working on this. I don't know, but who <laughs> actually, but it's distributed by Plugin Alliance. Um, and there's some features on the plugin uh, that wasn't part of the original hardware. So we're gonna take a look and a listen to this. Now, this is the stereo instance of this plugin. That's why you see a left and a right channel because we're listening to it on buses. But if you were to just put it on a mono channel, you would only see a single one of these. Okay, so let's walk through this cool looking plugin. So, first and foremost, what I love about this plugin. And a lot of the Plugin Alliance plugins that we've looked at recently, the channel strips and some of the other plugins that we've uh, done some demos on, you can search my YouTube uh, plugin reviews playlist, you'll see some of those. But one of the things I really like is that they make these GUIs now nice and big, nice and easy to see on the screen. The knobs are easy to read, the numbers are easy to read. A lot of plugin companies are starting to move towards this format, and I really like that. It makes it easy for an old man like me to be able to see the plugin really well, where some of the older plugins and some plugin companies still make these tiny little GUIs and it's hard to see everything. This looks beautiful and it's easy to read. So let's start over on the uh, left hand side here. So again, we have a left and a right because we're looking at a stereo instance and they're laid out exactly the same on the left and right as you would expect. We have our input here. The more you push the input, the more signal you're pushing into the uh, MC77 and that's what's going to start to um, have the audio cross the threshold and that's going to start to give us some compression. We also have an output button here. We have this little link button in the center, which means if you turn up the input, the output will automatically turn down and that's very helpful to level matching the plugin. So when you listen to it before and after, you have about the same overall volume. That's always a good practice. We have our attack and release here um, and works, works just like an original 1176 all the way to number seven would be our fastest release and attack all the way over number one would be our slow release and attack. Okay, we have a key in button here. We have a side chain link button here. We have our ratio button here. We have four, eight, 12, and 20. And if I believe you hold, do you hold shift or is a command? Let me try it. <laughs> uh, how, do you, how do you do the all buttons mode? I don't remember. Is it control maybe? Well, should have probably tested this before I hit record. Oh, okay. No, no, that doesn't work. There has to be a way. Oh, there we go. If you hold down the command key or Windows key and hit the uh, hit the four ratio, you'll have all buttons mode, which is um, famous. Uh, you know, even with the hardware, you need to push all the ratio buttons in and you use that in more of a parallel compression kind of a state. So that's how you would do that, either with the command key on a Mac or a Windows key on your PC. Then we have our gain reduction meter here. And then on the right, we have our metering. If we want to look at it, a gain reduction or we want to look at the input or the output on the meter and then we can bypass the plugin altogether. We can turn it on and off with this button here. Okay, so we're gonna look at it in gain reduction <clears throat> mode. Now what makes this uh, unique um, to the plugin is that we have this bottom section here, which is something that's really, really cool. And we can hide this bottom section just by clicking on this little icon in the top right hand corner just so you can see that here. Okay, over here we have our stereo mode because we're looking at a stereo plugin. We have the analog in digital, <clears throat> pardon me, um, 
kind of version of this plugin, if you will. The analog is going to give you a little bit more coloration, a little bit more harmonic distortion. Digital is going to be a little bit more clean. We have this TMT feature, which has uh, different channels that are modeled to give you a little bit of a different tonal aspect in a very subtle way. A lot of these Plugin Alliance plugins now have this. This is a kind of a unique feature, which is really cool. It defaults to channels one and two. You can hit the random channel button. It'll give you different channels, or you can just use the arrows to kind of um, cycle through them. Again, it's done in a very subtle way. On drums, I noticed it a little bit on snare, and we'll demonstrate that. We can hear a little bit of tonal difference when you switch to channels, because that's how it would be with a piece of hardware. Um, if you were to model two, di two uh, different uh, separate MC77 hardware units, they would sound a little bit different, and that's kind of the, the thinking behind it, and it's a really cool thing, and it is very um, useful. Next to that, we have our parameter uh, link here where it could either be off standard or proportional and that has to do with this link button here um, So in standard if you have the link button on however much you turn down or up the input the output is going to follow If you go proportional, I believe what that does is if we were to turn up the input here and then turn down the output and then hit the link button here Yeah, it's just that you can see it stays proportional how you set it, okay? And then you can turn it off here. So we'll keep it on standard for now just to make things simple. Let me shut it off here and put everything uh, kinda back like this. We'll unlink this for a second. So we'll start off with it, everything at kind of 12 noon, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, next to this, we have our mid-side uh, things for side chaining. We have our headroom uh, dial next to this. This will allow you to give us plus or minus 12 dB of headroom without having to mess with the input, um, and that we can play around with that a little bit. That's just gonna give us a little bit more signal um, working here and a little bit more compression. We have our side chain filter where if we don't want, let's say, the low end to have the, um, the effect on the compressor, we could always turn this up to, you know, like 56, 60 hertz and therefore the kick drum would not activate or trigger the compressor which is a cool feature we have this mono maker which is pretty interesting which is um and that kind of works along with the stereo with next to it let's say for example we're working on a on a drum bus maybe we want to have you know the, again <clears throat> or anything around you know, we pick our frequency of what frequencies we want it to kind of stay up the center. And then when we use our stereo width next to it, it'll kind of spread everything else out a little bit to give us a little bit of a stereo width. And this works really well. And we'll check that out as well. And then we have our parallel compression. We have, we can go from completely dry signal to 100% compression or anywhere in between. This is good for parallel compression. And that's it. So the bottom section is, is unique to this plugin, which wasn't part of the hardware, obviously. And that's pretty cool. So we have this on. On, um, we'll just close this for one second. So we have a session here again with no plugins on it. Um, I like to put these, listen to these plugins with no processing on the rest of the tracks. So you could hear exactly what this plugin and only this plugin is doing to our signal. We have all our drums down here in brown that is going over to a drum bus here. And on that drum bus, we have, we'll just mute everything else for a second. We have our purple audio MC77. So let's bypass this uh, for a second, or we'll just play back the audio and we'll twist some dials and, and try to see what it sounds like. So here we go. So we'll push up the input to get some compression. Go with a slow attack, fast release, four to one ratio. Okay, that's before, bypass. After. And do it about two, three dB of compression. Now, if we play down here a little bit, and let's uh, let's work with this mono maker. We'll turn this up to about sixty hertz or so. Well, first we'll we'll use the side chain filter here. So the lowest part of the kick drums are not really affecting this. We'll turn up our mono maker here. Now we'll use our stereo width a little bit. All the way off would be mono. Okay, so by using the stereo width, just using it a little bit, not too much, we're running it a little bit past 12 o'clock here. You can hear things start to spread out a little bit. You know, 
little bypass in here. That's before. Turn down the output a little bit. Try to level match the plug-in. Stereo with really spreads out those toms kind of nicely. Okay, there you are on drums. Let's listen to it on bass now. Turn down our drums just a little bit. Faster attack. We'll slow up the release a little bit, maybe like an eight to one ratio on this. Okay, we can link it. So obviously on, on a on a mono source like a guitar like a bass guitar, the stereo width isn't really gonna do much. It's before. On the output a little bit. how it really um, enhances and, and long, elongates that sustain, which is cool. The other thing we could do, let's mute the drums for a second, use this headroom to maybe push some more signal into this thing and kind of um, see if we can get it to distort a little bit. We could turn down the output where we don't have to mess with the input. Puts a little bit of hair on it maybe. So the headroom. It can work in conjunction with the input. Turn down that a little bit. So the more you turn down the headroom, you'll see the more compression we're gonna get, right? The more you turn up the headroom, the less compression we're gonna get. So if you turn up the headroom, then you have to push the input even harder, which is gonna push more signal into the compressor and therefore maybe dirty it up a little bit, distort it a little bit. So you can do something like this. It's before, after. We can bring in our drums, bring our drums back. Okay, we'll listen to it on acoustic guitars now. So again, we'll do more of a fast attack, or a slow attack, excuse me, fast release. our stereo width so by pushing the stereo width you can really hear the, the acoustic guitar spread out further in the left and right which is really nice lower that in the mix a little before
So it gives you some nice separation. So that stereo width is very useful on things like guitars, and we'll listen to it on keyboards here in a second as well. Um, that's a really cool thing. And even on drums, again, using the mono maker, you can, um, again, you can keep those uh, the frequencies that you want towards the center, and then you can spread out the rest of it. That's pretty cool. We can randomize the channel a little. Yeah, it's very subtle. So we use kind of a medium to attack fast release on these keyboards. It's a it's a bus, so it's a combination of some organs and some pianos kind of all bust together. So we use our side chain at about 80 hertz or so, so nothing below that will uh, trigger the compressor. our stereo width, which is pretty cool. Let's go four. We'll lower the volume a little bit. <clears throat> So again, using the stereo width, that's a really cool thing. You, without it, without this plugin engaged, you kind of lose the keyboards completely. Um, when you in, in, enable it with the stereo width, that's nice because it kind of gets everything out of the center and spreads it out and therefore you got more clarity. Really nice. So now let's listen to the accumulative effect across these four tracks. So I'm gonna take it away. I'll start with it in, and then I'll, uh, I'll pull it away and bring it back and you can hear what the um, overall effect of this, uh, of the purple audio is doing. Four. So even on the drums, this little section here where there's a lot of tom fills, without the plug-in, you, you kind of lose the toms. Everything folds into mono, but by using that stereo with it, and I know I've said that a few times, that's a very cool feature on this, on this compressor. Very cool, and we're only using the stereo with on the drums a little bit past uh, about two o'clock on the dial there. So that is a really, really cool. So that those are really cool features on, on this plugin, which is again, much different than an 1176. A, a typical 1176 doesn't have these additional features. The rest of the plugin, you know, without it, how does it sound compared to an 1176? It's very, very similar. I mean, the, the whole point of this is they kind of, you know, it's a FET style compressor, just like the 1176s. It's the same circuit design, same kind of layout and controls, but with these additional features, it really can give you some more tonal possibilities. And keep in mind, without, I'll 
outside of these plugins that we're looking at today, the Purple Audio, there's not a single plugin on the tracks anywhere, no EQs, anything. So you can do a lot of shaping and a lot of tonal shaping with this uh, Purple Audio. It's a great compressor, a great addition to, to your compressor collection. You can do things with this particular plugin that you can't do with a typical, typical 1176, regardless of the manufacturer. So very, very, very cool. Very cool plugin. I, I recommend you go out and demo it. As you can see, I'm demoing it. Right now, uh, this plugin wasn't given to me by Plugin Alliance like some of the other ones in the other videos that I've said. So full disclosure, um, I haven't been given this. I'm giving you my honest opinion. I'm just demoing it, but I think I might actually pick it up. I kind of, I kind of like it. It's a nice addition to my compressor collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for joining me, taking a look at the Purple Audio MC77 by Plugin Alliance. Go out to Plugin Alliance's website. Link will be in the description box below. Check out what they have going on. They've just now kind of rolled out this whole new plugin subscription plan um, as of the summer of 2019, which is when this video is being recorded. Um, they have a really good deals that for a very low monthly fee, or if you pay all at once for an annual fee, you get access to a lot of their different plugins. And lately, I got to say, Plugin Alliance, and I've never been, again, full disclosure, I've never been a big fan of Plugin Alliance plugins up until uh, recent, earlier this year when I started to take a look at some of their channel strips, in particular, the SSL channel strips. Now I've looked at those, I've done reviews on those, I've done reviews on the Focusrite channel strip and I'm looking a little bit more into their newer releases because they're killing it right now. They got some great stuff and an affordable price and now with the subscription package um, just about anyone can get in and get access to all their plugins for a very reasonable cost. So again hit that subscribe button, hit the like, share it with others. Again go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com make sure you get your five free training courses and check out what I have going on at mixingmadeeasy.net and until the next video I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you guys all soon. Take care.